All right, we got Josh Breider back. He's in the 608, and he's talking about all the changes to the cars that we drive. There he is. Josh Breider, it is a Monday for him, technically. He's live <laughs> at Smart Motors in Madison with more on how the industry has changed over the years. Hey, Josh. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, I actually decided to go back on vacation and then they told me I needed to come back. No, just kidding. We're live here, just a couple of technical difficulties this morning, but we're back here at Smart Motors and we're talking a little bit about the history of Wisconsin's oldest dealership. And there's a lot of history right here on this table behind me this morning. Uh, this morning, J.R. Smart himself is up with us. And J.R., your grandfather started this all back in the early 1900s and a lot of things have changed since then. Many things have changed since then, certainly. You know, talk a little bit about where you started because on the table right here this is the original building you were located in downtown Madison that's where everything began that's that's true actually it was a building just before this one uh, which caught fire uh, a couple of years after uh, my grandfather uh, uh, was located in that building and so we moved to 601 University Avenue downtown on the corner of Francis and University which is now the Fluno Center so things have changed quite a bit from then. So how did you go from downtown to where you are right here off of the Beltline in Odana? Well, the city of Madison helped us a little bit with that. They used uh, eminent domain as they were uh, building Campus Drive. Uh, we were further west on University Avenue and had been in that uh, location since 1939. And in 1966, the city approached us and said, sorry, we're building a uh, highway through your dealership. So we moved out here to Odana Road, which at the time, was the Odana Road extension. Uh, nothing but uh, pastures and fields out here. So this was the edge of town? This was the edge of town. The farthest west you could be in Madison at the time. So this is where you've been since then. And a lot of things, I mean, have changed. You guys have survived depressions, recessions. How do you do that as a car dealership, going through those tough times? My grandfather was very resourceful. Uh, during World War II, uh, all the manufacturers in the states uh, were converted to wartime production. So there were no new vehicles produced dur during the war. And you could only buy a car that the dealers had left on their lots at the time if you had a special permit. And that was issued to doctors and lawyers, I found out. Um, and uh, so he had to uh, make ends meet with the family. He was a justice of the peace and performed wedding ceremonies in the middle of the night when people came knocking on his door, returning men and women from the service. And uh, he would get his, his daughter and wife up and they would uh, play the piano and be the witness for these wedding ceremonies. He also was a, a mechanical engineer and he worked side jobs at Gisholt as a machinist. So it was a little bit of everything to a be able to A little bit survive. of everything, jack of all trades. And uh, at one point uh, during the early years, uh, he and some of his fellow dealers uh, created uh, the Automobile Salvage Company because cars were not made as well as they are today and there were a lot of ban abandoned vehicles along the side of the road and he was charged with the task of picking those up. Wow, well, a lot of history here, JR, this morning. We thank you uh, so much for being here with us and we we're gonna have a little bit more coming up, guys, but a lot of history here. I mean, even Frank Lloyd Wright himself bought a vehicle from here back in 1950. You can see that uh, right there. So pretty cool to see what has all happened and just having you know, Wisconsin's oldest dealership right here in Madison is a pretty cool thing. Do you get more Wisconsin than that? Frank Lloyd Wright buying a car from the oldest dealership in Wisconsin. Yeah, that's a really cool story. I hope they share that one again. Josh Breiner, thanks, buddy. Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. You can reach out on social media or email him at in the 608 at wictv.com for a chance to be featured.